Good to see you all here for our first look at our first base building slash survival game of the Steam Next event known as Desynced. As it says at the top of the screen, this is a demo that is now available on Steam probably up until but perhaps past February 13th. So if you're thinking about getting this one to try it out, it is quite an interesting title that has the premise of base building for survival, although it looks and kind of acts like an RTS game with the typical base building and, of course, building defenses. If you're a big fan of games like uh, Command & Conquer Generals or Factorio, it's somewhere between well, seeming a little bit like maybe Dyson's Fear Program at the same time with its uh, intended industry, but also with its defenses. It kind of is a nice mix of all those things, and I like it. Uh, I've enjoyed what I've seen so far, although it's a demo, so it's incomplete, but welcome aboard, and let's go ahead and get started. Now, when you play the demo, there's a quick play mode or a new game mode, but also notably is a multiplayer mode. Now, I'm not exactly sure if this is going to be two people managing one base or multiple bases working uh, to try to escape uh, separately, but can assist each other with supplies or defenses, or perhaps a PvP thing where you can sabotage the other and try to fight to get off the planet first. But it's a building game, a survival game that has multiplayer, and I don't think we get enough multiplayer survival games, let alone RTS games. But this is kind of more of a, I don't know, a base builder, and it's nice to see a game that has that entail. All right, we can go ahead and now start with the free play mode, which is the only thing available for demo, which means that there will probably be a campaign and other game modes that could be included in the future upon its launch, hopefully sometime in 2023. Now, there's also the ability to set all these different settings, including blight corruption. So there is certainly enemies to worry about and something that will maybe continue to infest the world too. <clears throat> yeah, as this background shows, it is absolutely beautiful with its day-night cycle, Really nice attention to detail for all the rocks and also the rain. All right, let's go ahead and jump in and take our first look. Let's go. Starting Simulation. Simulation Integrity Desynced. Oh, that's the name of the game. Wow. Cool. Press any key to begin. Wow, here we are. Welcome back, Commander. You've been in stasis since my arrival. I am Elaine, Emergent Logistics Artificial Intelligence Network. I've been activated due to severe structural damage to your ship, rendering many systems offline and in need of repairs. Oh. Wow, there's a, like a destroyed ship there. And doesn't she sound like uh, she's about to say seek fluid intake? Someone sounds like they're from Subnautica. Alright, what else? Tell me more. We are currently orbiting around an unknown planet. A landing team has beamed to the surface but a blight is causing interference to our scanners. You will need to deploy a small mining facility and establish an uplink from ground level. Try to find a metal deposit as we will need it for repairs. Okay. Your units gain functionality by equipping components, such as a miner or a fabricator. Components come in four sizes, internal, small, medium, and large, and can fit into sockets of the same size or larger. You can select the goals to get more information on how to complete them. All right. Thank you, ma'am. First goal is to deploy our lander. And as it says on the left side for the tutorial, we'll need to uh, click on that. There's a deploy base button at the top. So uh, I assume the areas in blue are maybe our area where we can build on top of after we build our base. So let's put that somewhere maybe where it's a little more clear. Over here by the desert region would be good. Uh, there we go. And yep, it deploys and starts to build. Excellent. Now we have these little miners here, I guess, or, well, technically they're scouts. You'll find a mining component in your inventory. Equip it on your unit to allow harvesting. You will also find a fabricator which can be used to create metal bars. Connecting your units to the logistics network allows them to deliver materials autonomously, so I'd suggest you do that now. More information is available in the codex. Ah. Oh. All right, wait a minute. I figured this out. So we can put a mining a rig and also a fabricator on top of these little scouts which now become miners and they actually are hovering so that's kind of cool you might be able to cross a, a multitude of terrain so i guess the first thing is to start mining no connect to the logistics network okay let's do that then so this will be on to if we right click network one carry out orders okay we're going to put these all on the same network so they'll work together all right <clears throat> job done yeah completed goal excellent uh, with a unit selected, right-click and start mining iron ore, or metal ore, okay? The unit will mine until it's full and will continue when there is space again in its inventory, okay? 
So I guess they kind of work in a chain. This scout is now a miner, and this fabricator is now going to make materials that can then be stored at the base. Kind of an interesting concept that the vehicles are more important than the base itself, as they have their own capabilities to process materials. Go ahead and make something to begin with them. Looks like we have metal plates, metal bars, and a foundation plate, as well as a couple of components, such as the fabricator and also the medium component assembler. So we can go ahead and start making those. But if we make those, we need 10 iron ore for the, uh, actually 10, 10 ingots for the fabricator, and also looks to be 10 crystal and 10 uh, panels? What was that again? Yeah, plates. We can go ahead and make those. So how does it, uh, what's the recipe for 10 metal plates? That's going to be two metal bars. So that's a two to one ratio. So we're going to need, uh, oh, it looks like they're already telling us, iron ore to uh, metal bars. Okay, so that's good. Go ahead and make that. Do iron ore to metal bars. There we go. And yeah, okay, you can actually see them transferring to each other that way. There should be some crystal fragments laying on the ground nearby. Since we only need a few for now, you won't need a miner. Just gather the ones that you can pick up. I'd also recommend you take the turret. Just make sure not to run out of power while it's outside your power grid. You want me to take the turret? Uh-oh, hostiles. All right, well, let's go ahead and uh, craft the metal bars that we're instructed. So it's uh, kind of a slow process to fabricate things. Uh, what are some of the other controls? Uh, visual register, home register, context register, signal register. So there must be some sort of way to filter between detecting signals and other things. Additionally, there looks to be a maybe a spacecraft here that's been destroyed or a piece of some sort of a space shuttle or maybe a space station. And then also over here, it looks to be uh, maybe a small base building or something. Not exactly sure what it could be, but certainly something. Oh, maybe a spacecraft that we could explore too. Okay. Anyway, back to our technology. We've almost made 20 here. So she also mentioned that we'll need crystals. So I guess we need to go to, there was one down here as well. Looks to just be called Crystal Chunk. Hey, you guys. All right, now we got ourselves 20 iron ore. Let's go ahead and grab Once you have the all of the crystal. You should build an assembler. With it, you will be able to produce new components, including an uplink. Okay, cool. Now we have uh, 20 build an assembler. We have 20 uh, ingots, and now we need 10 plates from that. So let's go back to base then. Go ahead and manufacture what we need. So from our fabricator, we'll make the 10 plates now. Perfect. All right, so now we're converting those again. And then we'll be able to build the assembler. And it says that we'll be able to produce new components, including an uplink. Perhaps we can also make units from here. I've got to say, kind of slow for a beginning uh, survival game. We only have two units to begin with. I don't see any creatures or enemies out there. Wait a minute. <clears throat> Could be wrong about that. Those birds might be able to attack us. That is certainly a base right there. So former base structures that people have tried to build on this planet. Looks like they've been destroyed and those birds are not a good sign. Somebody could have died there recently, maybe? On this Earth-like planet. Okay, we have uh, six components. Let's speed things up a little bit. Are we able to do that? Looks like there's only a pause feature. Is there a way to speed things up? Uh, maybe not. I'll go path lines. All right, well, we're making our last plate now, so we should be good shortly. <clears throat> we have our codex available. We have things like power production, registers, which I believe are filters. We also have defense. So as I mentioned before, we can be attacked with starter turrets, uh, turrets, laser turrets, shield generators, and walls being things that we can build in order to defend ourselves. That's nice. And now we can actually build the uh, fabricator thing. Uh, medium assembler. That's what it is. So let's build one of those. All right, so now we're going to get that constructed. Meanwhile, this guy's going to keep on mining, I suppose. And there's really not much else he can do at the moment because Before creating the uplink, it is best to expand your base full. with a few more buildings and mobile units. If you link your components together, you can begin automating your production. Now, well, let's see. I don't know if I can actually Yeah, it looks like this is going to have to go in the base. Ah, uh, okay. Now we can make stuff at the base. So if we're going to make additional workers, we need uh, 
Looks like circuit boards. Those will take five crystal and three plates. So let's go ahead and keep making those. So what would probably be best here is to try to make a unit that's just constantly making metal bars full time and also constantly mining full time. So two vehicles would be perfect for mining those bars all the time. Uh, let's see what the bare minimum is to get another vehicle up. If we take a look at the recipe. We just need three plates. So that's going to be what? Two, four, six ingots, I believe. Let's go ahead and make six of those based on prior knowledge. So we need Ashland. I wonder if we could do two things at once. Well, yeah, this can definitely do it. <clears throat> this vehicle here, we can go ahead and make uh, the metal bars with. But let's go ahead and make like a hundred. Because only this vehicle will be able to smelt those into uh, bars and then smelt them into... Uh, if we can set another recipe after this. Looks like it might be only one at a time. But then we should be able to smelt these together. Let's at least make maybe three robots. And of course, we'll need uh, we need materials for the microchips, and then we ma uh, we need materials for the vehicles too. So we're going to need two layers of stuff here. All right. So the current goal is to construct a unit, as we're trying to do now, construct a building, which we can do right after that, and then to establish an uplink. I'm assuming some sort of a, a ship or something around us. Wow, that vehicle, <laughs> it really looks like it's on fire or has taken some sort of damage. Looks like we need to repair that, but we're okay. All's good. All right, let's see if there's other materials out here. I love the day-night cycle and the sun coming through the trees like that. They did a good job of... <clears throat> trying to make an Earth-like planet that has a day-night cycle that really feels like you're actually going to have to um, c consider the time during the day. And this might be something to consider for perhaps solar panels if we have advanced power grids. We went from night and then immediately day like that. It's kind of cool. All right, so we've made, uh, what, 20? Go ahead and transfer these to this machine now. Okay, so now it has uh, crystals... We can go ahead and go with the scout and pick those up while it's still uh, producing. So now this can actually be a, a gathering vehicle and also a producer at the same time. So let's find some more of that. Nope. That seems to not be crystal. We want this stuff here. Like five there. A few more here. Probably some more crystals around. more here like four or five more deposits send our vehicle over kind of weird there seems to be some sort of a toxic cloud over these buildings but it seems to be with leaves now they mentioned a blight so it will be interesting to see what those actually will uh, happen to be now they mentioned that we can explore those buildings which we probably could do now but I'm going to try to stay on our tasks and see what we can do. I've gathered a bunch of that crystal now, which we can try to put inside of the uh, central command center. Which there it has the uh, fabricator or the assembler on top there. Go ahead and drop off some of that crystal then. And more of that metal bar. Okay, so now we're going to try to make the... Um, yeah, we need metal plates now. So actually what I should have done here is... Oh, oh I thought we were getting shot at there. Uh, we need to uh, switch that over, I think. Let's go ahead and perhaps drop an item. Can we do that? No, but we can transfer some things over. Actually, it looks like we have the metal plates here. Uh, no, that's what's going to be required. So, what do we put in the assembly line? We need to put these first. So what we should do is get these back. And now that we got those crystals, let's go ahead and have this guy make all of the uh, plates that he needs to. Looks like we're out of room to make any of that. Let's go ahead and cancel the rest. And go for metal plates. Low and steady, I guess, we'll win the, win the race here. Drop that metal on the ground so we have room to make more panels. Should be working. 
Make a hundred of those if we can. Uh, let's see. Okay, yep. So he's starting to make those now. Alright, so let's drop those off there. But I wonder how the automatic system works. Now, it looks like the miner is able to transfer the ore to the manufacturer. The manufacturer uh, has to be instructed to uh, take bars and plates and put them into the command center. But I wonder what else we might need to do. In order to make these circuit boards. So now we can make three of these. Let's go and make three. We can try to make three mining equipment. Okay, great. The central command center is now making uh, the circuit boards. Now, in order to make the miners next, we're going to have to wait because I don't want to cancel the recipe for it. There's a build menu, though. Currently, we're able to build a wall and a foundation and a building one times one. Maybe some sort of a foundation. It looks like maybe the foundation has to go down, and then we can put a building on top of that and give a blueprint for that. Now, this kind of reminds me a bit of Rift Breaker, where, of course, in that game that you've seen on the channel, the top-down base builder, where you need to play as a mech, a little bit like uh, Planetary Annihilation or maybe Supreme Commander, where the main goal is to try to build extractors around your base, and then, of course, you put a massive wall around it with tons of defenses in order to defend against bu uh, like big bug waves and things like that that attack. So this could have a, some of that vibe going on as well. Anyway, we got all the components we need, so now we should be able to make a vehicle as instructed. Or at least maybe three of them. I would like to make three, please. And good, that's only going to take a little bit of the material that we do have. Now let's see. Oh, of course, we need the plates delivered, though. There we go. Uh, missing ingredient and also needs iron bars. Oh, it does not take ingots for that, but it takes iron bars. Or reverse that. It does not take the uh, does not take the plates. Let's go ahead and stop that. Let's see. How do we cancel that recipe? Go ahead and pop that off. There it is. Oh, wait, our worker is now finally out. Fantastic. So now we have more vehicles for this. I wonder where that uh, piece of equipment went. I uh, chose for it to be dropped, but uh, now I'm not sure where it exactly went. Okay, well, now we have another vehicle up, so now we can start speeding things up. Uh, we should be able to get two more. But these guys need that assembler, so... Or rather, the... Um, yeah, the fabricator. There it is. It's in its storage. Uh, let's go ahead and make more bars for this. Try to do 100. Okay, so this guy will supply bars. Then I think we need to take a small percentage of those bars and turn it into ingots. Or plates, rather, from the bars. But we need to make another uh, assembler for the base be able to do this, but these workers can't really do much there. Let's go ahead and construct a building. They mentioned we could put down a foundation, I suppose. Maybe that counts as a building. Oh, there's an enemy against us. What is that yellow bar? Oh, produced and required. Okay. <laughs> I thought that was like true production or something. And then the last thing is to establish an uplink, which there is something we can make for that. Which I think we can do later. But regardless, now we have three vehicles ready to go. That's cool. Alright. I do like how slow this is at the start. Because scaling up means that we'll have to have a lot of research. Of course, in any sort of survival game, you start with like a pickaxe and an axe made out of stone. Then you work your way up to copper. And this is kind of the same thing where we're starting out by like having simple small miners. And then work our way up to more industrialized uh, complexity. Alright, so they want us to build a... Uh, I guess we don't need to build this small foundation. Let's go ahead and cancel that abort, uh, the, yeah, abort the construction. Launch aborted. Okay. And then let's go with the small building. Let's go ahead and try to put that in the corner then. That takes a circuit board as well, so we're going to need to make another one of those. So let's make another circuit board and see how that works. So the circuit board is being constructed. Looks like we're missing two metal plates.
Uh, let's go ahead and do a canceling of that. We'll try to make some metal plates now. We'll try to do 10. Looks like because everybody's been set on the same network, at least they're smart enough to... It, it seems the miners are smart enough to go and get what they need from where they need it. And there's a ton of space here to be able to build more. And I'm not sure exactly what the map size is. Wow, if I look out on the mini-map, yeah. Looks like this is a... If you look at the right upper right corner, there is a massive, massive map to this. Now, I'm not sure how much of this is actually water and impassable mountain, but there is a uh, possibility that we'll have to go through massive, like, enemy bases and like I don't know I'm, I'm expecting like alien nests where they're all just oh god where they're like just crawling around and it's horrible hate it all right establish an uplink we'll need more uh, power for that looks like we are making what we need grab those go ahead and make more plates please And return that to the base. We're making a quote-unquote building. What exactly is this? Looks like it's got the same notches for storage here, so it could be a construction site. Building one times one. I'm not even sure how big the footprint of the second thing they asked for us to build, which was that um, sort of an uplink. We'll have to see how that goes. But anyway, Steam, again, as a reminder, has been having all of these events over the last about year and a half, two years of demos for games that are coming out soon. And it's I, I really can't say how happy I am enough to be able to try a lot of these games before they're even released into uh, like an early access state or an alpha state. So that way people who are big fans of it can give uh, feedback and or people who are really really liking a game can add it to their wishlist beforehand and of course steam with wishlists if you're if you're not uh, sure uh, or didn't know this steam actually works by promoting games that have the most amount of uh games wishlisted to the top so when a game drops like for example uh when a big anticipated title like let's say oh boy uh i don't know maybe that uh, zombie game that everybody's been so excited about that's uh, kind of like sus and not been coming out well, let's just say it actually did drop, and when you got some of the biggest wishlisted games on Steam, such as the big uh, release of Void Train coming soon to Steam, massive games that have been wishlisted for a long time there, I believe. Void Train is the number two game on Steam. Uh, when those finally get released, those are the ones that will show up in people's uh, pages first. So it's pretty cool to see all that stuff being more popular on Steam now, with the ability to test out something before you... Well, try before you buy, which is fantastic. All right, we really need multiple uh, fabricators here. I'd love to unassign the miner and have two of these things building, but like we need we need a third vehicle here to manufacture, and I don't have a piece of equipment for that. I want uh, I want the scout to be mining. I want the fabric fabricator to be able to make uh, iron ingots. I'd like a second fabricator to make plates, although slower. So that way, some of the ingots go into the base, and some of the ingots go into another refinery that then gets refined into plates and then it can go into the base and then we could get one more scout to go around and pick up a bunch of random uh, pieces now there's tons of iron around but let's try to explore one of these wrecks let's go ahead and right click and see if these get destroyed and see if we get something cool or if it's a, a trap not sure exactly what we can find or how long exploring oh, okay wait a minute oh okay so it works like how it does in satisfactory where you'll have to bring over something in order to get it started again so we could view uh a console but this is going to result in uh us still needing to so we got to solve a puzzle that's interesting a little mini game here well the circuit can go this way but i mean you know oh do we have to light up all the nodes okay so this kind of changes things a little bit so we just have to connect all these up, but we still have to provide a circuit. Which is annoying. I guess we'll power these like this. That one goes this way. I guess that can be disconnected there. Uh, boy. Uh, is this even solvable? Uh, 
complete the circuit, all nodes need to be connected. Oh, I clicked the question. Did it reset? Oh, it reset it or something. Oh, there we go. Not sure how to get that to work, but anyway, it says that everything has to be connected. Won't be able to do that, though, until we got the uh, microchip, so let's see if everything's the same. Is there a puzzle like this everywhere? Oh, some are more complex than others. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. So some puzzles, very complex, others very simple, but still, we're, we're, yeah, we're gonna, uh, yeah, we need bars to repair that. We're going to need a lot of stuff, so let's go back. Okay, so that's something we could be doing with our time, then, is... Uh, be able to take a look at these wrecks. Now, full disclosure, I tried this out a little bit before this video just to see how things might operate, and I did not find any wrecks on the other save or the other uh, world, but interestingly enough, this game does work on like RNG seeds, so there are certainly uh, differences to the layouts of the map and whatnot. So let's go ahead and drop some more in there. Well, let's get this guy repaired. Maybe we'll get some free microchips and we can get out of this stun lock. Although I can say I'm having a fun time, like, discovering how this might work. Oh, wait. Did it just change what was required? Wait, did that thing change the recipe, or was that, that something different? Maybe I was down here. I don't think it changed the... You require uh, uh -oh. a power source to operate efficiently. You can equip one after you've researched it or build components that supply and transmit power. Oh, she's right. These can run out of battery. Oh, just sitting here, this one's actually running out of battery, too. That means the other one's going to run out. Wherever it may be. Oh, that's really annoying. Ah, but maybe low battery means that they just have a slower move speed. Anyway, uh, let's go ahead and transfer the item there. Ah, cool. Okay, wait a minute now. That's big progress. We've got a circuit board, refined crystal, and a high-density frame times, like, two. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Uh, not enough free space for all the items. Really? Oh, I guess I do have one slot of uh, iron bars now. <sighs> Although the assemblers and stuff did have extra capacity. I guess we just come back one at a time and pick these up. All right, so you can have a scout group gathering materials. If a battery quote-unquote dies, it's just low battery and they just need to recharge a little bit. But recharging is almost instantaneous. Good. All right, let's go ahead and grab one. All right, cool. So now we can make a lot more things at the base. Fantastic. I was getting worried. I wanted there to be other ways to do other things other than the grueling uh, pace that we were at. The last thing, which was the... We got the refined dust, and now we have the high-density frame. Do as well. All right, cool. Let's drop these off. That's cool. And now, wait a minute. One of them actually required the microchips for the other quest, so let's go down... Boy, where was it? The crash site, maybe? That one seemed to be a little more complex. This is solved. Oh, there's one more thing there. There's another attachment. Let's go check that real quick. Let's have you assign... Well, wait. Let me check what's in there for a reward. The technology in this structure is highly compatible with our own. Investigating more of these structures would advance our own technology. Boy, I wonder why it's so compatible. All right, hold on. Boy, it's hard to see that thing. All right. Oh, we also <clears throat> we have five miners now. Fantastic. We got five mining attachments. That's huge. Or is it? Oh, it's S small. Okay, I was gonna say that was that's a huge find, but well, I want an assembler instead. Okay, transfer the item. Oh, we also have to solve the puzzle still. I wonder if the vehicle has to stay here in order to solve the puzzle. It seems like it might be this way. Still trying to f defeat this final boss here so I can figure out where the power may go and what it might... Uh... Where did it come from? Where did it go? Got an eye, Joe. Ah, there we go. And one more, which should go this way. It is clear these structures were built by a similar life form, yet the timestamps date back thousands of years. Interesting. We now have a small storage, data cube matrix, high density frame, and a reinforced plate. 
Very cool. Well, now that they're unlocked, let's just go ahead and leave them. Uh, we can bring them back to the base, but it's just going to be the words that's taken up until we actually have a use for it. So let's just leave it where it is. Let's go up here. And, uh, now, yeah, now we have another miner. That's cool and all, but uh, I guess maybe we'll mine crystals. Go mine the crystal. You mine the iron. We, we still need more vehicles, though. Kind of cool that exploring is a little bit more important here. Oh, did we? Yeah, we have the microchip, too. How does this work? Oh, this is a different puzzle. It's like a blackout puzzle. Okay. To unlock the inventory, please complete the required chain. Thing in the middle. Uh, I guess I can just do the brute force. I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, you knew that, though. I'm a YouTuber, smile. Like following this thing around in a circle. What if I try to go fully red? If I try to get it all red, I'm just going to succeed, probably. Puzzle boss! Actually, wait a minute. Do we just have to have power flowing from one direction, maybe? No. Has to be both. I think you're supposed to do it like this. Well, I have no idea, honestly. It's like a Resident Evil puzzle. To me, anyway. Holy crap. <laughs> I have no idea what the rules are here. <laughs> Oh, uh, I'm really curious to know what's inside, though. It could be something to help us out. But I'm just going to click randomly for a while, and let's see if we can brute force. And first try. First try. And first try. First try. Out of hell with it. All right, well, let's go ahead and see the other thing. Uh, there was something else, right? We got the one up top. What is it? Oh, yeah, we got this explorable. Wait, did we not? If it's something that we already have, does it still appear? No, okay. So it shows that it's completely empty now. All right, cool. And those of you with big brains, you can download this demo and try some of the puzzles. I actually am quite delighted to see puzzles like that in a game like this, where usually it's just like, um, you know, you just grow crops and that's about it, uh, including building a base, which is not a big deal. I'm cool with that, but... All right, looks like we're going to need to do that. Cool. And then we need the crystals. Which you there, sir, should have plenty of those. Uh, looks like he's got 12. Cool. So how the heck do we uh, expand our network? I suppose it's via the uplink. That's certainly something we can do. So back to the chain. How do I supply this? Ah, that way. Okay, transfer the item. The numbers on some of these parts match our own exactly. However, the chances of two species evolving in exactly the same way are astronomical. How is such a thing possible? Yeah, not enough room to take more than one. All right, we'll go back one at a time. Let's see. So this is done. This is done. That one's done, too. I'm taking back the microchips just because there's something we've been using immediately. We'll take that. And I guess the crystals we can transfer into some sort of a power. But what I really want is more of these, uh, what is this? Miner. I re really wish we could have something different. At least we could put the miner on top, though. Metal plates would be useful. Only times three. But still better than nothing. Okay, so let's go ahead and make a bunch of... Go ahead and make a bunch of ingot stills, then we can eventually try to make a bunch of plates while we're still exploring. Anything else we can explore? Now let's go out into the fog of war and see what's out there. Although we probably can't go very far due to the battery issue. Get this guy back up here to do the the working. So it looks like this planet has a lot of some sort of a metallic ore and also crystal. And there could be, I think we saw another substance a little while ago that was like a kind of a powdery thing. Oh, here we go. Oh, no, it's just there. 
explorable. Now, I wonder what this means for this planet. There's a blight. So what does that mean? Does that mean the planet is kind of um, dying through its uh, weird climate change type thing or something? Like, what exactly does that mean? Is it like the planet is, uh, I don't know, water is evaporating? Like when I click into a section of three red, it goes blue. Yep. Trying to make that three red and then go blue. I think I'm trying to trap the red. I have no idea. Auto save complete. Good. I'm gonna have to come back to that. Brain too too small. Too small. But that's fine, because there's going to be a lot more of these wrecks out here that we're going to have to break through. All right, so they want us to now make an uplink and connect that to the base. So what does it take to make a connector or an uplink? So it's one microchip and five ingots, to which we have plenty of that. So let's go ahead and make one. And then we'll be able to deploy that through the build menu. Now, I haven't seen the ability for are small miners to be able to build so hopefully we don't need a assembler to work on like a field or something like that but i'll be happy if we find another assembler i mean it's it's totally worth it to go and explore with the scouts and then try to find i guess this one should come back but uh, it's a good idea to be able to explore and try to find something that we can use especially those microchips saving us tons of time much better to do it to do it that way all right we now have this uh uplink buildings cannot Drop items directly. Library and default. Oh, here comes our rig. Our little worker is on the way back. Let's see if he can place this. Inventory it is. Okay, so it looks like it's in this building. Now, how do I activate this? Uh, component doesn't fit into socket. So we're trying to make it show how big this is. Hmm. The medium size, but I don't know exactly what I need to build that. So if I wanted to change the recipe to a yeah, medium component, I guess we could put that on the base maybe? Let's try that. Let's take it on onto the base. We can't put it out. But maybe we can put it on. Oh, it doesn't fit into the socket. All right, well, we have one medium socket. We have established a connection to Holy the crap, I did it! I have already begun synchronizing our databases. With this, we are now able to research new technology in the tech tree interface. I did this it. This will help us replace the missing data from the damaged data center. Okay. So now we can send out basic signals. Don't know what that means, but it unlocked a bunch of stuff for us that we can now fabricate, I suppose. So now we can throw that back into storage. So now we can make mining components, but uh, that's about it. We have no active research though. Okay, we have a research tree. Human intel, human humanity. Oh, are we? We're like an AI that's studying mankind, that's why. Okay, that's why she's thinking that there's two different uh, groups or something like that. It's actually AI using human technology, but thinking it's its own thing. Virus research, we can do viruses, advanced technology, uh, research robots, the blight itself, and alien technology, which could possibly be related to humans, perhaps? And each of these have their own categories. So we have basic signals, basic power, basic structures, 
Looks like we do things like silicon, energized plates, wire, and robotics data cube. Ah, well, that could be where we're getting with those uh, science packs and stuff from Factorio or uh, like in Dyson Sphere with those cubes as well. Hmm. Oh, there's also nanobots. Check that out. Looks like they'll be able to do some uh, transportation. Uh, allows for damage repair and quick transportation of inventory. Now that's cool. And we can also claim power somehow through maybe microwave uplink. That's kind of cool. All right then. Well, let's go ahead and uh, do what they'd ask then. So we're supposed to research basic signals. And so we can start that with a little bit of time. Looks like there's multiple steps. So it requires five circuit boards. So we can continue to go look for those. Let's see if our machines have any on them. Just a little bit of crystals there. Now, I wonder how we expand our power system. Could put down a turret. We need a vehicle to transport that. Oh, here we go. Here's a few uh, microchips now. That should be enough. It's just going to take time. And it seems like a very long time. Has that even started? Time 50 seconds. Remaining five. Oh, no. Do we have to build a research center? Oh, God. I hope not. Storage buildings. Yeah. Well, we do have that storage now, so we can put that down. Let's see how that works. Uh, we got that from this wreckage down here, I believe. This one. We've got ourselves a small storage, which maybe we can put on this vehicle and possibly hold more of something. Ah, cool. Well, that's a good thing to call out. Okay. Storage devices still have an intact matrix. They can hold the info in the data cubes. The similarity to our own technology means we can easily adapt our robotics factory to their production. Okay, so now we have something to gather more information. So a data cube matrix. All right, that's kind of cool that we put a storage thing. I like how you can actually see it on top of the unit. That's really cool. Not to mention, I didn't uh, kind of really look at this, but the appreciate the uh, differences between the ground and some rocks, a variety of grasses, and then the wind blowing and things kind of going in waves. You can kind of see how the wind is blowing through. And that really looks cool. They did a good job with that. High density frame and reinforced plate can all go in there base and yeah of course as they mentioned we have our small our medium our large and our internal uh storages so that's cool so data cubes it is ma'am so is research actually taking place we are still making a worker there the research is not going We'll have to figure that out. Let's see what it might say. Uh, research basic signals to unlock new components. When researched, you will be able to build signal readers, repair, and signposts. Okay. I wonder what that's for. Maybe we can label different parts of the base. Right, I want to keep going and exploring a little bit. Oh, there was like a river here? Or is this a coast? Uh, it kind of looked like water for a second. They did a good job with this uh, cool fog of war. For a moment, I thought it was like waves. And there are just random rocks everywhere. Big old mountaintop there. Oh. Yep, something's attacking. Wow, that thing was fast. And it was able to hit us uh, while we were a little farther away from it. So that's what we're going to be dealing with, little bugs. Unfortunately, the map for the most part seems pretty flat, and the only way we can defend ourselves really if now if we start to adopt uh, defensive systems like in They Are Billions, what we'd have to do is we'd have to build a gigantic wall here with turrets and try to keep them out, securing a lot of these resources for ourselves. Damn. Damn you, aliens. All right. So I can already uh, see what the main premise is here. Once you build your base, throw some miners up, but really... Maybe don't even uh, worry about uh, doing any sort of early mining. Just go for the technology. 
try to solve the puzzles and then maybe they require if you can get lucky go for the ones that require the iron bars then take some of those bars to the ones that require uh those which could give you microchips that could then give you bigger tech uh, they're going to be a little more complicated than the puzzle but in order to solve it you do need to have a unit there so you can't really run to enemy territory without some sort of defenses so you can spend a little bit of time running to the nearest three four five six uh, scouting areas try to complete the console and then as i'm going to try to do try to spam because i have no idea i have no idea i know i know you're typing out a college thesis on how to do it i know i know i'm not going to read it though i'm not going to read it oh well whatever uh, it's uh, unbeatable it's uh, it's an enigma nasa still working on it it's the uh, uh it's a code whatever whatever code what's it archimedes code whatever it is cool all right, well, I want to build more stuff in this game. It certainly seems like a slower-paced survival game, but it's hard to judge this one just by, like, off of a, you know, YouTube video off of a short part of a demo. But it seems like at least there's a lot of potential to build something cool. And the premise, like, in Stranded Alien Dawn here is to get off the planet and or to contact somebody. But perhaps what we're trying to do is lure humanity in to make them think that there's other humans here that have crashed. And once they show up, boom, we take over. That'd be actually kind of cool. Sentient AI gone rogue. That's what I'm getting here. But we don't know it yet. Oh, well. Well, anyway, if you want to download this one, make sure you check the Steam uh, sale, I guess, going on. It's not really a sale, but the big next event on Steam for this and many other games. Desynced is available now to try out in a demo. Just wanted to showcase it because I really like how the buildings look and the vehicles. Although the gameplay is a little slow for now, it does seem like one of those games where after a few playthroughs, you get your bearings and then you're able to rock it forward. All right, I'll see you guys later. Thank you very much for watching. Smash like on the way out on this video. Make sure you go ahead and subscribe. Turn on that notification bell. And ones down below. Glory to Raptoria down below in that comment section. Get it going. There you go. Look at all the others doing it down there. Awesome. Fantastic. Hope to see you all soon. Thanks for watching.